In this video, we're going to talk about how to call a stored procedure from a Wonderware Orchestra object. Using a script function and using some .NET calls, we're going to call a stored procedure, a SQL Server stored procedure, pass some parameters into that procedure, and see the results inside the database. So here's an example of this stored procedure we're going to use. You can see I'm using the runtime database. I have a couple extra tables in there in the runtime database. These are the parameters that I'm going to pass into this uh, stored procedure. And you can see here's the SQL, just a basic insert into the SQL table using the insert, using these parameters I'm going to pass into the, to the table, using a start time and an end time, and a pretty basic stored procedure that I'm going to call from this orchestra object. So here's a view of the actual table. And this procedure has been run a few times, so there is some test data in here, but here's the actual database table itself and here's some results I can re-query that database and you'll see it gets updated with the latest values that were inserted into the database. So let's take a look at the script function and see how we're making the call to this stored procedure. So this is my uh, orchestra script. I'm at the template of this template called station test. You know, this script is going to fire when this test SP bit goes on true. That's when it's going to fire off this stored procedure or the, the call to make the stored procedure. I'm dimensioning some variables here in the beginning, setting up my SQL connection and my SQL connection commands. Uh, dimensioning a couple of the variables here. But here's the meat of the, the call to the stored procedure. So what I need to do is I need to create my SQL connection, pointing to my local server, give it the name and the database that I'm going to try to log into here. I'm going to open that connection. This is where I'm telling the actual name of the stored procedure that we previously looked at. So I'm just filling in this variable called sQuery that's going to pass in that parameter into the uh, .NET function call that's going to make the call to the stored procedure. So I'm building out my .NET call, filling out the SQL command with my query, uh, telling it's a stored procedure type call. These are the parameters that I'm going to pass into that stored procedure that we saw inside the stored procedure, this Titan serial number. As a parameter, so I need to uh, do the following lines of code here to pass that parameter in. I'm passing another parameter in here called test station, right? And then I'm just putting a little log message here to let me know if I have any errors. I'm going to be able to go look into my logger to, to see what the status is. And then here's where I'm ex executing the query right here, and, and it's going to return the rows affected. And I'm going to close out that SQL connection once I execute the query, and I'm just going to do a little log message into the longer to make sure that uh, everything went successful. So let's give this a test. I'm looking here at Object Viewer. I have my parameters I'm going to pass into the stored procedure called Test Station and the Titans to Serial Number. So I'm just going to double click on that inside the Object Viewer. I'm going to change that to give it a variable of you know, 7654321. I'm going to apply that. I'm going to give this uh, the site Titan Serial Number here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Apply that. So I'm going to execute this stored procedure. We're going to check the database and see if those values show up in my database. So the way I fire off the, the actual script that's going to trigger the stored procedure is setting this bit to a one. So I set this thing to a one. I apply it. <clears throat> it's going to be executing my stored procedure as we speak. I'm just going to set it back to false. So let's go take a look at the SQL database table itself and see if it put in these parameters into my database. So now I'm sitting here looking at my table where I was trying to insert some information from that stored procedure. Let's do a refresh of this query and uh, go back and look. And sure enough, there's the data right there that we put into that user-defined data type inside the Orchestra object. And you can see it has a timestamp of 1750, which is uh, right about now. Let's go do that one more time just because that was that was fun. We're going to go here. We're going to change this to another number. We'll make it 55555. Apply that. Okay. We'll make this one 99999. Apply that. Okay. We're going to fire off our script by setting this bit here. Apply that. Okay. Let's go back and look at my database table. We're going to do an execute. And sure enough, there's my data showing up in my database. So the store procedure itself is actually inserting the data. So to recap, we're inside an orchestra script called test SP. We're going to fire off this test SP when this bit goes true. 
and we're going to make the .NET function call here to call this stored procedure. Right? We're going to set up the .NET function call. We're going to give it some parameters. We're going to give it the SQL connection. We're going to give it the command type. It's a stored procedure. We're going to pass a couple parameters into this call, and then we're actually going to execute the actual command to fire off the stored procedure in the Microsoft SQL Server database. So once you understand what the script language looks like and what the .NET function call looks like, it's pretty simple to be able to make a call to a Microsoft SQL Server uh, stored procedure to be able to use that within the Orchestra environment. Thank you for listening. Need to learn more about this and other in-source products? Check out our training tracks designed to guide you down your learning path for in-source products. Whether you're using a classic InTouch and Historian architecture or using System Platform, we have a track to help you get the most out of your software investment. To register or learn more, click the link in the video description below. Thanks for watching this in-source video.